I hope you are doing well so far today. Uh, if you are in our area, you know that we have now entered into a phase of a snow and ice storm that's expected to last some period of time. The struggle uh, for us at First Baptist Church is that we had planned tonight to begin our uh, six-week Lenten gatherings at 6 p.m. And so uh, we're going to cancel. And uh, if you know me, you know that I hate to do that. Uh, my commute's really short, so I can make it here. However, uh, for a, a whole host of reasons and, and for respect for snowplows and law enforcement and for your safety, we're gonna uh, just ask you to stay home tonight and uh, come with us next week. We'll be in Cornerstone Church in Argyle, uh, and you can come join us there as we spend some time, 6 p.m. We'll uh, spend about 40 minutes worshiping and song, preaching from the Word of God, and then uh, we'll take some time, have some coffee, hot chocolate, desserts after that, uh, and you're welcome to stay in fellowship with one another. Uh, and so we're looking, looking forward to that. We're certainly looking forward to it tonight, but uh, Mother Nature will not let us do that, and so uh, we'll, we'll miss you. All right, now, uh, that said, you could shut this announcement down right now. The urgent news is in place, but I did want to just give you a moment of encouragement if you would stay with me and maybe a moment of explanation. You see, um, we gather for a six-week period of time on Wednesday nights from today, which is known as Ash Wednesday, through uh, the Wednesday before Easter, uh, ultimately to conclude on Good Friday and then Easter Sunday, as a season of time to prepare us and to remind us especially of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross and the hope that is brought in his resurrection from the dead. Now, this period of time has no uh, supernatural significance more than any other day. There are no days that are of particular holiness and value above another. However, uh, the reason we participate, the reason we want to uh, utilize this time is because anytime we have an opportunity to draw you in over a period of time to, to pay some special attention to who God is and how he's working, uh, we don't want to miss an opportunity like that. And so, depending on the background you grew up in, you might be very familiar with the season known as Lent, uh, and tied to it might be an abstaining from certain types of food or certain types of drink. However, in this, uh, we find that the Bible doesn't really give us some clear instructions about any specific season of time and how we might interact with that. However, it always gives us encouragement to preach and teach the truth according to the scriptures. And so we want to be a place and a people who are consistently doing that. So we're going to use the next several Wednesday nights as an opportunity for that. We're going to look so you can kind of prepare mentally, if you would, uh, on the last week of Jesus's life and earthly ministry. And so it begins, what we were going to spend some time on this morning is his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, the capital city of the Jews, entering into crowds cheering and praising who he was for all the wrong reasons. And it continues on through a week that is ultimately going to conclude in the people being baffled and frustrated that Jesus didn't come to give them everything they wanted in that moment. And the reason is because he came to give all of us so much more. You see, uh, what it means to be a follower of Christ is to not expect of one to come and solve every problem that we have as we see fit. That's not what Jesus' purpose was. It wasn't to uh, fix our earthly disappointments, problems, frustrations, and disasters in that moment. It was to go to something deeper. You see, when Jesus came, he came to set us free and to fix one deeply rooted problem. The Bible calls that problem sin. The word literally means missing the mark. It's every thought every idea, every word, every deed that you have that you know ought to be different. All of the things that you know are not right in your life. And the reality is, for all of human history, all of mankind, everyone who has ever existed, this is an issue. God has laid out a, a moral, truthful law of how we ought to live, and no one has lived up to it in perfection. 
And so in this, when Jesus comes, and what we'll look at over the next five weeks on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m., we'll see that he comes to teach that he is alone, the one who can overcome and can give forgiveness to sin. It's ultimately done when he heads to the cross, takes on the due punishment for sin for myself and for each one of you, and pays the price in full. Those are some of his last words on the cross. It is paid in full. It is finished. And in this work, the Bible says that Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin, so that you and I might be the righteousness of God. You see, the biggest problem that we have in all of our life, in all of humanity, is our brokenness and our enmity, our distance away from God. And when Christ comes, He brings us, He reconciles us back to God. And so over the next five weeks, starting next Wednesday, 6 p.m., we're going to celebrate that. You can meet us in Cornerstone Church. The following week, we'll be back in Darlington, Cornerstone, Darlington, uh, spending some time together in the Word of the Lord, worshiping His name. And I really hope you can join us. We'll plan to see you this Sunday uh, and in the weeks to follow. And stay safe tonight. Have a great time.